Well, hello, hello, and welcome back. I'm AJ O'Neill. If you're wanting to get into GameCube Homebrew and you've been searching through the GC Forever wikis and forums, trying to make heads or tails of how to use it for things like game backups, emulators, the Game Boy Player, and burn discs, I'm gonna lay this out for you real simple, hopefully fill in the gaps. If you want the time code for this video, check the description. My ultimate GameCube list for parts, downloads, etc., including everything you see here, the description. First, homebrew is not something specific. It's a broad generic term, like the word food. Pizza is a kind of food, Swiss is a kind of homebrew. GCMM, the GameCube Memory Manager, GBI, the Game Boy Interface, Clean Rip, emulators, indie games, and mods are all homebrew too. Homebrew is anything, whether it's hardware or software, that isn't authorized by Nintendo for the Dolphin, Nintendo's code name for the GameCube, and the reason that it, its games, and all of the official accessories have a part number that starts with DOL for Dolphin, and why homebrew files have a DOL extension. Second, as of 2020, there are only three ways to load homebrew for newcomers. Despite the fact that the wiki keeps historical records of dozens of different ways, over time, all of that has been whittled down to the simplest and least expensive, which are these. A GameCube memory card that is preloaded with Swiss and a hacked game save. The Daytel SD Media Launcher with Action Replay Disc. The Xeno GC Mod Chip. You can make a hacked game save card with the GameCube Memory Manager if you already have Homebrew loaded on another GameCube or Nintendo's other Dolphin console. The only other way to get one is to buy it on eBay, and it must match the specific region and version of a compatible authentic game disc that you own. Wind Waker is the most popular choice because all you have to do is insert the disc, insert the GameCube memory card, press power, and hit the start button on the title screen. The hacked game save will cause the game to glitch and then load Swiss from which you can load anything else. As of today, you still can and should buy the original Daytel SD Media Launcher from the official Code Junkies website. It ships from the UK, but the shipping is fast, and it's about the same price as buying a hacked game save card. It's outdated and very slow, so it's really only useful for loading swiss.doll from an SD card to then load gcmm.doll to then create a hacked game save with swiss.gci, for which you need a 16 megabit or larger, meaning 251 block or larger game save card. Also, the newest version comes with a micro SD gecko, but you can't use it because the software only works with old, slow, full-size cards that are two gigabytes or smaller. Daytel is the only company to manufacture manufacture a disc that beats Nintendo's authenticity checks. As for the Xeno GC, it's only a partial solution. It allows you to load unlicensed discs, but not burn discs. Each GameCube laser is individually factory tuned to only be able to read manufactured DVDs. The laser potentiometer or pot that controls this can be adjusted, but it's complete trial and error due to natural differences in the manufacturing process and wear and tear on the laser itself. I've researched this extensively and I'm confident that you won't find a simpler or cheaper alternative alternative within 10 hours or $100 of these three options. Moving on. This is the SD Gecko. This lets you put an SD card into the memory card slot. However, you can't just use it as a super duper GameCube memory card because they speak different protocols. Slot A and B are serial peripheral interface or SPI ports. Kind of like USB works for different devices such as SD cards and keyboards. SPI works with SD cards, the GameCube's EXI cards, and the GameCube microphone or whatever else. You will need one of these. This this is a tongue twister, the SD to SP2 or SD to serial port 2 adapter. You can only use this on the original DOL001 GameCube, which has digital video out for HDMI on the back and a serial port 2 on the bottom. This goes in, like it says, with the inside facing in and the outside facing out. This is a one gigabyte SD card. Old homebrew like the Daytel SD Media Launcher require a card that is slow speed and two gigabytes or smaller, and deleting files sometimes causes problems, so it's best to only add files or to format the card and then re-add files rather than deleting. It must be formatted FAT32. This is a 128 gigabyte micro SD card that can be used with the SD Gecko or the other thing. Most new homebrew support cards of any size this is the Game Boy Player. It has an actual Game Boy Advance inside. While not homebrew itself, you can pick this up without the Game Boy startup disc and instead use GBI, which is why I started my homebrew journey in the first place. With this, you can play the real Link's Awakening, Minish Cap, Oracle of Seasons and Ages, and other fun classics like Final Fantasy 1, 4, and 6 in full HDMI glory. Which brings us to, this is the Carby V2. It's the best and cheapest HDMI adapter. It has a manufactured connector and the exact same F 
FPGA chip and GC video software as every other. Moving on. The file types you will encounter are .7z and .rar files, which are just like zip or tar files, but annoying. You can find tools to extract these, but for small files, I use the website extract.me to upload and convert them to zip and then re-download them so I can extract them normally. .dol are homebrew apps that go in the root of your SD card. .bin are old homebrew files that probably won't work anymore. .gci are hack game save and homebrew loader files like the Wind Waker hack and Swiss. These go in the MC backup folder of the SD card. Hacked game saves must match the model number and region printed on the disk. Wind Waker is gzlp.gci in PAL regions, gzlj in Japan, and gzle everywhere else. Burn disks can only be read if the laser is tuned. .iso are full-size 1.47 gigabyte gain backups. .gcm are either ISOs that have been renamed or maybe ISOs that are scrubbed to remove junk files and or trim to reduce the file size, perhaps with WIMS ISO tools or NKIT. .gcz are for the Dolphin emulator. They won't work on the real GameCube. Many homebrew apps must have a specific set of folders with a specific name. As I mentioned before, GCMM can only load and create game saves in the MC backup folder. It can't see anything else. SNES 9X GX, the Super Nintendo emulator, has a specific folder structure that you have to create and place backups in, otherwise it tells you they're in an unknown format. This is common across the homebrew community. The best place to get the latest downloads is usually not in the forums. Usually it's on GitHub. Sadly, the best place to get the documentation is usually not GitHub. It's usually on some random site where someone has scoured the wikis and forums and has put together a for noobs guide on their own, or the wikis, or the forums. As for the question you're not allowed to ask, done. Hopefully that lifts some of the fog. If you like this, give it a like. If you want to support me, just use any of the links in my shopping list below. If you don't mind ignoring my other tech nonsense while waiting for another Nintendo homebrew video, subscribe. And if you're interested in learning about software engineering, check out the links for Beyond Code Bootcamp. Until next time, adios.